Greetings from Tokyo. I hope you're well. I'd like to take this opportunity really quickly to um, let you know that I'm still in the middle of cleaning up my shelves and uh, hopefully new shelves will arrive this week, uh, hopefully by the weekend. And once the shelves have been assembled and all the DVDs and Blu-rays have been properly arranged, I hope by then that I'll be able to prepare a sort of one, you know, disc by disc video showing my entire uh, Criterion collection, etc. So hopefully that should be um, uh, taking place maybe by next week, I hope. There are ni over 900 titles in the Criterion Collection, uh, spy-numbered titles anyway. So it it's a really ambitious project to try to put all of those titles into one video, but I will do my best. And I also try to do the uh, the, the updated... Um, Criterion Collection Laserdisc Collection video, as well as a cri um, not a Criterion, as well as a Voyager Company Laserdisc video. In the meantime, I just wanted to share with you another title that I think um, is a really wonderful title. It's a film that is uh, is one that I, I grew up watching. It's one that's close to my heart. You know, when you ask me. What is your favorite John Carpenter film, John Carpenter directed film? Hands down, for me, it's this film. It is this film. Can you guess what it is? Big Trouble in Little China. This is John Carpenter's best film, in my opinion. My favorite film by John Carpenter. It, it's it's up there. It's probably one of my favorite films of the 80s. If I mean, I, maybe I, you know, it is my favorite film of the 80s. What am I saying? This is a true delight. This is a true delight, you know. It's such a perfect film. I don't think there's a, a, I don't think there's anything wrong with this film. I would say that it is a perfect film. This and The Thing by John Carpenter. Those two films are, are so perfect. I, I can't, I can't believe... Uh, I can't believe they were they were made, you know, within the span of you know a few years by the same guy. It's just amazing. John Carpenter's a genius, but <clears throat> excuse me, um, but this film, Big Trouble in Little China, you know, um, if you're watching this video, chances are you're probably uh, you know in in the sort of like mind as I am. So you probably have similar tastes as I do. In which case, you've probably seen this already many, many times. If you haven't, though, if you haven't seen this film, you should. You are missing out on a real gem. This film, from start to finish, all it wants to do is to entertain. That's all. It, it doesn't, it's not trying to be serious. It's not trying to be... Uh, you know, hit you over the head with some kind of message or some gravitas or etc. etc. Its mission is to entertain, and boy, does it entertain! This is the funniest, uh, cl cleverest film uh, I've come across in a long time, and probably the the main element that contributes to that sense of fun and adventure and entertainment is the guy on the on the cover here Jack Burton what a character what a character he is i don't know i don't know if he's really smart or really stupid but it doesn't matter because he for whatever reason he he just knows what to do you know and Jack Burton is that is one of those magical creations um, you know, I, I really think that Jack Burton is up there with some of the great characters of the 80s, you know, like Indiana Jones. I think he's better than Indiana Jones, actually. You know, Jack Burton, he is so, so you know, he's so arrogant and he's got that swagger and you still love him. You love everything he does. And it's just so cute. Like, like, you know, when he shoots the gun. You know, and and then the guy says to him, "Is that the first time you ever killed someone?" And Jack and you and Jack's like shocked because he just killed a guy with a gun. You know, but what's he supposed to say? He says, "Oh, it's the first." No, he said, "Yeah, 
yeah, of course I, I you know, that's of course, you know, he, he's such a, I don't know, he's, he's such a little boy and he's so cute and charming and he really knows his limitations, you know, um, uh, oh gosh, I really should have, I, I, I should put a spoiler warning. Oh, okay. Forget it. If you're going to, if you're going to watch this video and not watch this film, you better stop right now because I'm just going to talk about, you know, everything about this film. So stop it if you if stop this video if you haven't seen Big Trouble in Little China, okay? And then when you finish come back, okay? Because I'm going to talk spoilers of this film. Okay, you're still here. Okay. So Jack Burton, right? So many great scenes of Jack Burton and his character, but perhaps my favorite bit that so shows so much of his character is at the end you know he's won he killed the bad guy and they're all celebrating and he's just gonna walk away and you know kim cattrall right um he says you know well you're gonna you're just gonna leave and maybe you know we could probably it, it might work out between us you know if you can fit in a little like a little enough space for uh, for two of us in that in that pickup truck of yours and he says you know he knows his limitations he says you know yeah it might work out but in the end you'd probably get you know fed up with me and it won't work out. you know it's so wonderful and charming how much he knows his own limitations as a man you know and gosh he doesn't even kiss her goodbye right and 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 right that's what they say right oh gosh aren't you going to kiss her goodbye and he says no Ah, oh, man, I love Jack Burton. He's such a cool guy. Um, what else? Oh, Dennis Dunn. Man, Wang, right? Wang is the hero of the film. Jack Burton thinks he's the hero of the film, but the real hero of the film is Wang, and he's trying to find his his uh, his girlfriend, right? He's gonna he's gonna marry her because uh, you know she's coming from uh, from China, but uh, the whole that's the whole crux of the plot because she has green eyes, and and that's what um, Lo Pan needs is he needs to sacrifice a girl with green eyes in order to become human and mortal. Wang is the man. He is the man. Dennis Dunn is the man. He is so charming and charismatic in this film. He has the charisma of, oh gosh, you know, um, he's so light. He's like, Dennis Dunn is like Fred Astaire, you know? He's like those great, you know, or, or um, um, uh, Gene Kelly. He's just got that lightness of, of touch on his feet. And it's just, and he's fast, and yet he he delivers lines so well, and he's so funny and um, uh, earnest, and he knows exactly what he's doing. And by the end, when you've got that whole climactic fight scene with every, all the low pans forces and the three storms and all that stuff, oh man, he just holds his own. He he's fighting at the end against. Um, is it rain? No, no, the guy with the long hair, and he's doing that sword thing, and he's doing all the thing, and he does this thing with the eyebrows, and oh gosh, Dennis Dunn is the man. He is the man, and he does that thing at the end with the with the sword fight, and he does the little twirl thing with the sword. Oh gosh, gosh, I love this film. Speaking of uh, other characters. Um, you know the the whole concept of these these clashing dueling uh, gangs coming together, and in the center of it is this supernatural element with the three storms and Lo Pan and Egg Chen on, Egg, Egg Chen on the other side, and and you've got these sort of dueling wizards. Oh wow, fantastic! You know one of my favorite scenes is when Egg and Lo Pan are fighting, and this is at the end after Lo Pan's become. Uh, I guess mortal, and they're doing the whole like wizard battle. So Egg Egg Shen's got the thing with his balls, I think, and and uh, Lo Pan does this little thing with his fingers, and they're doing that little, I don't know, the laser show, and they're fighting with the with the uh, the uh, the the um, kind of the what do you call it, um, like light show sort of um, holographic fights, I suppose, and you know it it sort of I think it ends in a draw. Um, but, uh, after that, you get a quick glimpse of Lo Pan, a close-up of him and says, you know, you could never beat me, Ek Shen. You know, oh, 
gosh, that says so much about that the the history of these two characters. So you know that there is a oh man, you know, if this film were made today, you know that the 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 producers would be uh, preparing for a prequel or something. You know, the origins of Egg Shen and Lo Pan or something. But ah. Oh, you don't need it because you have all the history between these two great characters right there in that single moment. Oh, man. Um, and the three storms. Gosh. What? Um, yes. Yeah, so what is it? Is it there's thunder and rain and lightning? So lightning is the kind of the young guy, the young, good looking guy. He looks like a model and he does the whole like, like, but you know he i think he's he's the youngest one and he had i think he's probably of the three storms he's probably the the um the one that's probably least experienced right you could tell because when he f does that little lightning flash against egg and egg just deflects it with his little sort of silver fan you could see the shock on lightning's face you know he was he got you know he he just uh, he got played you know he got played by egg and um uh, yeah so there's th um there's lightning and then there's rain with the long hair and he's the big sort of sword fighter guy but dennis dunn is a better sword fighter in the end uh, i'm telling you but it's a great fight it's a great fight and, and rain holds his own and he's got those like nerf balls and he he, he uses those nerf balls in order to to um um torture jack burton ah oh, wow what a great concept using nerf balls a guy who represents the element of rain using flying Nerf balls to torture Jack Burton. That is a wonderful concept. Wow, only a genius could have thought of that. But for me, it's got to be Thunder. Oh, man, this guy, this guy who looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he's got that huge, beefy, like his chest is about to explode out of that suit you know when he's wearing that suit and he's just he's got that cigar and he's just so oh man um wow wow the way he goes out is just oh it's amazing it's just you know you, you could tell that thunder really loved low pan you know <laughs> I mean, I can't believe I've, I'm saying this, but, but you know, I'm thinking about that scene where he sees Lo Pan dead with the knife in his head, and and he's and you know he's fighting. Um, he's just been fighting uh, Wang, and you know, and, and you know, everything is so intense and 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 um, uh, really frenzied. And he comes back, and he just he stops, and he sees um, Lo Pan's dead body, and he turns to the camera, and he just huffs and puffs. You know, his master is dead. So all he can do is lament. And the way he laments is he just huffs and puffs until he explodes. <sighs> this should be taught in screenwriting classes. You know, the, the way that stories progress. And his demise is not superfluous. No, it, it shows his character, believe it or not. Because he loves Lopan so much. He's so dedicated to Lopan. It's unbelievable. It's it's his love that that you know that gets him in the end, right? Oh gosh. Oh man. Oh and uh, Kim Cattrall. Oh, Kim Cattrall. She is so witty and fast. You know, it's it's like she's um she's like reading her dialogue like it's a Howard Hawks movie, uh, His Girl Friday. Um, and she's just so charming and beautiful and uh, assertive. And um, uh, she just creates the character, which is a greasy law. And uh, gosh, gosh, man, man, oh man, why did, ah, I'm sorry about this, but I'm, I'm just thinking back to it. Why did uh, 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 Jack Burton walk away? He should have, oh man, he should have at least kissed her. Man. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that film, this film means so much to me. It, it, oh, man, this film means so much to me. Gosh, there are so, so many great moments in this film, aren't there? Man, so many great moments. And, um, um, you know, when, when, I was, when I watched this film, you know, at the end, 
and Jack Burton's driving away and you it, it the camera kind of pans over to the back of his truck and you see the monster come out I always thought oh they're gonna make a sequel I was always waiting for a sequel to this film you know big bigger trouble in little China or something you know um, some ah oh, it would have been so great to see uh, but alas, it never happened. But, you know, perhaps that's to the film's benefit because it's just a complete package as it is. And, um, uh, yeah. Oh, gosh, yes, yes. Um, uh, gosh. Uh, Egg. Egg Shen. Ah. Oh. Oh, I love that character, man. He, he rivals um, Obi-Wan Kenobi for me as that sort of the wise uh, wizard type Um Man, you don't want to mess with Egg. He knows his stuff. And he it's such a perfect, perfect... Um, uh, um, what's his name? Victor Wong plays Egg Shen. Oh, gosh. What a performance. What a performance he gives, you know? I mean, I, I, I don't say this... I don't say this uh, in jest. I really mean this. You know, Egg Shen... Um, uh, Victor Wong gave a really great performance in this film. Really great, you know? I'm reminded of, I forget the year it was, but, you know, The Karate Kid. You know, The Karate Kid, um, Pat Morita was nominated, I think, for Best Supporting Actor for his uh, work as Mr. Miyagi in that film. But I think, actually, that, you know, uh, Victor Wong is better in this film than... Pat Morita is in, in Karate Kid. I guess that's a whole nother discussion, Karate Kid, which I still love uh, to this day. I love that film, Karate Kid. But, but um, you know, maybe, well, I think about it, maybe it's an unfair comparison. I f please forgive me, Pat Morita fans. But um, uh, I'm just trying to suggest that uh, Victor Wong's performance here is truly dynamic and dynamite. Um, it's, a, it's fantastic, uh, really fantastic. <sighs> Just a quick word about this. This is the DVD. Man, 20th Century Fox DVD. I don't know when I got this. This is a long time ago. I really should get the Blu-ray. I don't know why I haven't gotten it. I guess it's just... I feel so comfortable with this film that, um, yeah, I just... I, I love this film. And I don't know. It, it's, it feels like... I don't know. It's, it's like... Um, Maybe it's like that old, you know, that old doll or something that you had as a kid and you never threw away because, you know, it was even old and ragged and, and it was beat up, but you never threw it away because it meant so much to you. I think that's what this DVD is like to me. It, it's, it's like that. Maybe it's, it's like an old toy or something that I always loved as a kid, but never wanted to throw away because it was, it, it's good as it is. You know, this is fine the way it is. It has the uh, commentary with John Carpenter and Kurt Russell, one of the best commentaries out there. Gosh, you can tell that they're having a good time. Nothing, they, they don't care. Um, they say some pretty, uh, I, maybe, they say some things that, that, that come pretty close to the edge, you know, uh, but they pull back just enough. Man, they are having such a good time with this commentary. It's like you're listening, you're like, Watching a film with friends, you know, John Carpenter and Kurt Russell. Man, man, what a combination. What a great combination. John Carpenter and Kurt Russell, those, that, that combination of director and actor belongs in the same pantheon as, you know, Scorsese and De Niro or, you know, Akira Kurosawa and Toshiro Mufune um, or, you know, Federico Fellini and Marcello Mastroianni or something. You know, it's, it's that good. It really is that good. Um... You know, this will probably never escape the the confines of the quote unquote genre film or the '80s genre film, which is a shame. Um, on the one hand, because I think it's a masterpiece and it, it deserves to be looked upon as a, a great work of art and cinema. But even as a genre film, there's nothing wrong with that, is it? Is there? You know, nothing wrong with that at all. If it's a genre film, then it's one of the best effing genre films out there man i love this film big trouble in little china man i'm sorry this has probably gone too long um but um 
If you have any info about the Blu-ray of Big Trouble in Little China, please let me know. I'm still so curious about that. I might want to do an upgrade to Blu-ray one of these days. If you can recommend that Blu-ray, uh, please let me know. I think Arrow? I, should, I could be wrong. I should have prepared more for this. I apologize. Maybe Arrow Video released a Blu-ray of Big Trouble in Little China, Region B, I don't know. Um, if so, I'm, I love Arrow Video, so uh, I wouldn't mind getting that Blu-ray if it's good. Um, anyway, I, I should have talked more about other John Carpenter films, but this this is enough. This is an I could go on for forever talking about this film. Man. <laughs> Man, I'm going to put it on right now, actually. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to watch it right now. All right, so anyway, sorry about the, the long video, and please take care. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you.